Hello and welcome to the finale of our Jigsaw Puzzle Game UI uh, UE4 game uh, tutorial series. That's a mouthful. Thank you again for watching us so far. Uh, we're on to the final episode where we're just going to add a few final touches to wrap it all up in a nice little neat bow and we're good to go then. So at the moment we've got just the game working as is. I want to be able to reset this game and also have something indicated on the screen that shows how well you're doing. So let's take a look at what we can do here. So I'm in my jigsaw widget UI here and we're going to add a button to the bottom right here. So I'm going to add a button and drag that into our jigsaw cameras panel here on the right. And this one we want to drag to the change the angle to the bottom right here change the positioning to zero zero change the alignment to one one so you get that alignment when the bottom right hand corner there and we just change the size of it as we see fit so we change that to 300 by 80 and I'm going to reposition that so it is minus 50 in the X and minus 50 in the Y perfect next we're going to put in some text in there so drag some text into our button UI. Now our button, we're going to change the appearance of. We're going to go and change the background color here. And we're going to change that to have an alpha of uh, zero. And click OK. We're then going to change the text over here to say reset puzzle. There we go. And when we go to hover over the button, click on the button and go and change its style to hovered. We can change the tint of it to yellow. So it should now tint anything that's inside it yellow. So I'm going to change the name of this button here to the reset button and hit compile. Go down to the bottom and you'll find the on clicked event. Click on that and create an on on clicked reset button. Now for here we're going to take the piece tray out and then we're going to clear the children inside the piece tray. That basically wipes out all the pieces that were currently on our board here. We then want to take the jigsaw slot grid and similarly you want to clear that children too. So it gets rid of all the slots. So if you fill them all up it'll just wipe them all out. So that will clear the whole entire board. We now need to rebuild it. So before we rebuild it we need to change the correctly placed pieces integer to zero. So set that to zero. And then we're going to call our build pieces and call our build slots. And that's it. Hit compile and save and then go into your game. So now we've got our pieces here where I can drag, drop things in like so. I can hit the reset button and it will reset the whole entire board. Like that. Cool. So next I want to show that I've got some sort of count on there saying how many pieces are remaining or how many I've got correct. So you can either do this as a counter or as a bar and I think we'll do both. So what we'll do is put this right at the top of our screen here on our canvas. So we're going to do a horizontal box. Plug that into our canvas panel. And this horizontal box we want to stretch across the whole entire width of this. So the anchor for this is going to be the full width anchor. And we're going to change the offset right here to be 0. Uh, the size and the Y we're going to change to be, uh, let's say, 100. Yeah, that would be alright. And in here we're going to have two things. We're going to have a progress bar and some text. So progress bar and some text. So the text is going to say how many are left, and we'll do that in a second. But to give you an idea of spacing, what we're going to do is we're going to change the text block value here to say a square bracket, and we'll do a, a, a hash or key sign, a pound sign, sorry, um, and then do a four slash, and it'll do sixteen, for example, and close square brackets. So it looks something like that. Okay, um, that's just so we can see it by like basic building standards. We can see what it's going to look like. Then I'm going to click on my progress bar and tell that to fill the available space. Boom, there you go. Now we're going to tweak that a little bit and change some padding. So I'm going to add some padding on the top here 
of 10. On the bottom here, another 10, maybe a bit more actually, let's say 40, mm, a bit less, 30. And on the bottom, 30. Yeah, okay, that's better. Uh, on the right, we're going to have a padding of, say, 20. And on the left, we'll leave it at 0. That'll be fine. Um, and then on the text, I want it to be center in line with that text field there. So again, padding here, I can make it the same as this. So 30 and 30 on top, top and bottom. So 30 and 30. And that puts this in the top there. And if I want to make it even more sure, I can just click on the vertical alignment and hit the center. It should be okay. Okay, so there is our value there. I'm just going to put actually some padding on the right there so it doesn't look too squished up. Let's do 30 on the edge there. Perfect. Okay, so there is our values. And so we've got progress bar, and we'll call this one, we'll keep it simple, call it progress bar. And make that is variable is ticked. And then the text, we want to change that to progress text and tick that as is variable as well. Hit compile and then save. Go to the graph view and we then want to go to piece correctly placed. And this is where we're going to add this stuff into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to just disconnect correctly placed pieces for now from the Boolean check on the branch because we'll move this along like so. And we're going to change first of all the uh, actually, we'll make a function. We'll make a function. Keep it simple. We call update progress. We'll call it. And on update progress, we're going to change two things: the bar and the text. So let's do the bar first of all. So the bar, we're going to drag out from the variable list. Choose get. From there, we're going to use the value, a function called set percent. Now the set percent here is a float that goes between zero and one. So we need to normalize our number of pieces that are correctly placed. So if you drag out your correctly placed pieces and also drag out your number of pieces, you go from here and you can normalize, uh, sorry, you've turned to float first of all, to float, and this one to float. And you want to normalize the correctly placed pieces to a range. The value is the correctly placed pieces. The range minimum is zero. The range max is the number of pieces. Plug that in. Now what this does, it basically turns this into a decimal or percentage of this uh, relative value. So if you've got, say, uh, 16 pieces, 8 are pl placed correctly, this will return 0.5 because it's exactly 50%. So we'll drag that into the in percent there as complete. Next we need to update our text value. So if we go drag our text box out and we're going to go from there and choose set text. On set text, you're going to drag the in text out and do format text. Now this allows you to insert text and plug in your own parameters into the text field. To do that, we're going to go and put a square bracket in and then put in a curly bracket. Now, curly brackets are used to in, uh, identify parameters. In this case, a variable that we can plug in and swap out for the text value. So here I'm going to put in um, the first one, which is correct. and close curly bracket. Then I'm going to do a forward slash and then another curly bracket for total. Close curly bracket and then close square bracket. Hit enter and you should see two parameters come up, correct and total. The correct is going to be your correctly placed pieces and number of pieces is going to be your total. And that's it. Hit compile and then save. Go to the event graph and plug that new function, update progress, into piece placed. Then connect up your branch as you had it. The don't forget to hook up the integer back to your number of pieces, like so, or from the list of correctly placed pieces. Hit compile and save. So let's test that out. Let's push play. And if I drag out my pieces here, ah, here's the issue. I forgot to call the function, didn't I? So let's go back to that. So on the jigsaw slot, on the on dropped event, which is here, we want to call that event dispatch we made in the previous part, uh, episode. 
So drag out event piece, uh, event dispatcher piece correctly placed, and do call. And that's all you have to do. Compile and save that. Push play. So now when I place pieces, this bar's updating, numbers updating happen here as well. And away we go. Ooh, that way. Getting there. Getting quicker at this. Done. Hey, it says you win up here, which is correct, and that bar's complete. Great. I uh, hit reset puzzle, and oh, oh, I need to tell this to update. Now it will update when I do this, but I need to tell it to update that as well. So, on your jigsaw widget, go to the graph, and when we build and oh, sorry, when we click on a reset button, I'm just going to put in there to update progress after we reset the place pieces. So update progress, plug that in, and that will update and change that bar to reflect that and to test that theory if I drag in a couple of pieces here hit reset and that goes back down to zero excellent um, and last little bit here let's just put the update progress onto the construct as well there we have it okay so let's make it do something other than just say you win we're going to hit save and let's change this so go to the design view and in here, I'm going to do some text. And the text I'm going to do is going to be over the center of the whole entire screen. So how do we do that? Well, what I can do is put it in my main canvas panel, which is the root canvas panel. So if I drag that into the canvas panel there, click on there, and change that to be center aligned in the anchor. Change the positioning to 0, 0, the alignment to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And we're going to change its uh, text here to say, you win, exclamation mark. And I'm going to change the size of the whole entire thing to be a lot larger. Uh, I'm going to make it center aligned as well. So change the justification to center. And we're going to also transform its vertical alignment, which is somewhere. Uh, where is it? If not, uh, I thought we had it here somewhere. If not, we can just move it up, and that's not a problem. So position Y, we'll just move that up. Oh no, I had, sorry, my bad. I didn't have size of content ticked. Have size of content ticked. That's what I've done wrong. Uh, and that'll be perfect. Hit save, and there we go. So we only want this thing to appear once we win uh, and to add to that I'm going to wrap that with something else as well I'm going to wrap that with a border and this border I want to fill the whole entire canvas so we're going to fill that up change the offsets to 0000, zero, zero, zero and change the color of it to black and do 0 0.8 there and the text we want to make sure is not stretched but centered in the boulder. There we go. That's what that would look nice. Okay. Um, so with this boulder, I want to be able to still click on the reset button um, and make the reset button appear above it. But what I'm going to do is just make the uh, boulder click through. So just make sure in the behavior here, if it says visibility, click that and change that to non hit testable self and all children. That way it won't detect any clicks and it will just allow the mouse to go through it and hit that reset puzzle button if you wished it to. Hit compile, save, and we're done. Now we're going to make this invisible entirely when we are not, uh, at, not at the start of the game. Otherwise, when we push play, it's going to tell us that we've won straight away, which is not what we want. So what I'm going to go in here to do is change the borders visibility sorry, to hidden. Hit compile go to the graph and when we've done the u win print string we can click on that and we need to change that border to be visible so because it's a variable we need to make this variable so the border we'll call this one the u win and tick is variable 
compile, go to graph, drag out U win, and set visibility to non hit testable self and all children. Hit compile, save, and then push play. So if I were to beat this game now, Uh, no. You win. And you hit the reset puzzle button and it reset. When we reset it, we need to turn the you win off. So on the widget, on when we hit the reset button over here, we'll take the you win, set visibility, and change that to hidden. And that'll do it for this episode. Um, so I thought this would be the finale, but we're going to have one more episode. And in that episode, we're going to have the ability to choose and change the picture inside of your game. So a little button that you click on, show your options, and you choose it. So if you want to watch that next part, head over to right now to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can watch that part plus many other videos well before anyone else. Big thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. And if you're watching this and you're not subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out a lot. So thank you again so much. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.